it's also a pleasure to be here, and thanks to the organizers for such a great or, uh, hospitality here in Maastricht. Um, the title of the paper is Regulating the European Market for Contract Law, Harmonization or Standardization. So I would really would like to make a claim uh, for standardization of uh, contract laws throughout Europe rather than harmonization of these laws. I'm writing this together with my colleague Mitya Kovac uh, from um, Ljubljana, Slovenia University. The concern, this paper is concerns with the famous European proposal for a common European sales law, which was proposed in 2011, and its accompanying uh, impact assessment. As many of you may know, the objective of such a uh, common European sales law is to support the economic activity in the internal market by improving the conditions for cross-border trade for benefit of business and consumers. The improvement should be achieved by reducing the barriers caused by differences in contract law between member states. This is what is stated in this common European sales law, why we need it. The problem so that the uh, proposal wants to address is this high legal information cost caused by legal diversity. So simply, every member state has its own private law, including sales law, contract law, tort law. So if everybody has its own legal system, then to do business in another uh, country causes people to incur high legal information costs. You have to learn about the legal systems of other countries, and that can be costly. So the solution for this high legal information cost, which exists in the market for legal contract laws in Europe, would be the establishment of a uniform and optional a common sales law, which can be used everywhere. So what we do in our, we take that as a starting point and we look at the proposal and the impact assessment and the, the, the options chosen, well, the option chosen and also how they justify the need for intervention. But we change two aspects of the EU's regulatory approach and we will come to a different conclusions about why EU action is needed and about the most appropriate regulatory instrument. So we come to a different conclusion uh, than what is done on based on the impact assessment. So our paper is not about the substantive content of this CSA, uh, the sales law, but it is really about we have every member state has its own sales law. Why should Europe take action in this field? Uh, what is the justification? And if it takes action, what kind of action is necessary? I will already give a summary of our conclusions. We say, well, it is appropriate to take action in the field of uh, um, the market for co contract law, but the reason for it is because there are market failures. So, um, and what should EU action do? It should impose information duties on the national lawmakers to describe their legal systems in detail, and they should, well, in our view, provide a European standard code. What is a European standard code? Well, it would be, and you can start, you don't have to start with the whole civil code in the beginning, you could start with a small field like the European standard sales code, which would be a code containing rules which apply throughout the whole of Europe, unless a member state says, look, we do not use this rule, we deviate from the standard, but um, that would be the deviation from the standard. If a country does nothing, then we simply have the standard applied, but you can deviate if you want. So that would be uh, our solution. Now, to come to that conclusion, uh, let me skip a bit. We have to change one of the fundamental assumptions underlying the impact assessment. And if you change that, you can come to another way of why you should intervene in the market for contract laws and what action. Namely, we, you should, uh, what, what we say is actually that high legal information costs, the cost of learning about different legal systems, is not an unavoidable side effect of legal diversity. On the contrary, you see in all these documents, the assumption is, well, we have high legal information costs. This is an unavoidable side effect of legal diversity. So what they say is legal diversity creates high legal information costs. So which action is required? Well, you have to do away with the legal diversity because this is the only way to, to stop the high legal information costs. 
But if you take another view, the alternative view, uh, which we take for an, our analysis, that we say, look, high in legal information costs to learn about different legal systems, they are not an unavoidable consequence from legal diversity. Instead, they are a, a, a consequence of some existing market failures in the market for legal rules. And so the idea is that you could correct for these market failures. But the basic point is it is not uh, legal diversity that causes the high legal information costs. And why do we come to that conclusion? It's easy to see that if you compare it, legal diversity with product diversity in product markets. So product diversity, it's a natural consequence of more competition. If you go to a supermarket and you go to the wine division, you have a diversity of wines there. You have red wines, you have uh, white wines, rosé wines, Merlot, um, Cabernet, Sauvignon. You have wines from Chile, you have wines from South Africa, from France, and everywhere. There is a large product diversity. So I compare that with legal diversity. <laughs> So people come into the, the, the supermarket and they see a lot of diversity. And of course, you have to check all these wines. Eh? And it might be indeed more costly than when there is only one bottle of wine. But nobody would say, because the consumer has so much many more choice, uh, he can't handle it. So what shall we do? We need one uniform type of wine to solve that problem. Only red Merlot from Chile can only be provided. Uh, so in the product market, if we are dealing with diversity, and indeed diversity comes with some extra choice and, and, and having to deal with different products, nobody would say we have to make uniformity. So, but indeed it is a problem of choice that you have to look at more things. But the market usually solves that problem. It's not unavoidable that you have to check more. For example, the supermarket has found ways to reduce my information costs by what, doing what? They classify the reds by, uh, with the red wine, the, the white wine, the rosé wine. You can see from different countries. And you even can see which wine goes with which meal. So my information costs are reduced uh, a lot uh, than if they would not do that and just put all the wines to each other, then it would be costly to me. So the market has mechanisms to reduce these extra information costs for consumers coming with legal diversity. So what we ask is we have legal diversity. We are now going back to another market, the market of legal rules, where you choose different rules in Europe, different legal systems. There are legal information costs, but the real question is, are there, will the market reduce these costs? So, and if not, then we need Europe to help. And the claim is, indeed, the market will not reduce the costs. But let me just first say, what are these costs? Why is legal information cost so high? Why is it costly if you want to go and deal in a Dutch person in Italy? Well, because legal systems they are extremely elaborate. If you want to know, you want to have a sales contract. It's not just one rule that you need to know. You need rules on formation. You need rules on breach. You need on damages. So uh, legal rules are extremely elaborate. A single transaction can be governed by thousands of different rules. Moreover, these rules do not only come from law, but also from case law and so on. So it's an elaborate system. So you need a lot of things to know. The second problem is that they are written in a different language. Right? How can I study Italian law? So that is also very high cost. And the third thing is the chaotic organization. We have some comparative lawyers uh, here today. And you know, if you want to learn how a legal issue is solved in another country, you, you don't go to the university library and you have that immediately there. No, you have to look in different sources and so on. So that is a very high legal cost. So I would make a, 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 a comparison like the market for legal systems. Eh? So all legal systems in different countries, it's like a market for cars where consumers even do not have a picture of the car. Eh? So we are not informed. But now the question is, Will the market solve it? Will the market solve it? Like the supermarket is solving my problem of having a lot of diversity in whites. And the idea is, well, no. There is one market failure. There are three market failures. The first one is these national lawmakers, they do not have incentives to provide information to non-citizens. So 
you can compare that again to producers of goods. So I always make the, the, the analogy with the products market. There too, you have problems with incentives of producers to provide information. But we go to the producers of legal systems, and who is the producer? The national legislators. They produce legal systems, but they have no incentives to be, give clear information on their legal systems. Why not? Well, we have already seen some public choice theory. Well, what do politicians aim for? They want more votes, and they act in a way that then give them more votes. But why would you act in a way that benefits non-citizens to give them a lot of information about your legal systems because these non-citizens can't vote for you? So basically, there is a, this, the market doesn't solve the information problem for that market failure. Solution, appropriate EU action. Well, it's like what we do if there is an asymmetry of information in the products markets. What do regulators do? They create duties to provide information. Why is Europe not creating duties for national legislators to give good information accessible to non-citizens? What kind of information duties are, are we thinking of? Well, we would say you have to describe all your legal rules in detail. Huh? Not simply in vague rules, because legal rules, they change human behavior, and you can only know, uh, well, it can only change human behavior if you know the rule. You have to do it in English, huh? so it must be available in English, and it must be available in electronic form. This is already a way you can reduce information costs for consumers. The second market failure that we see in this market for legal rules that indeed the, the producers of legal systems, the, the parliaments, the legislators don't do, it's the standardization failure. So, namely, the way of organizing legal information is not standardized among countries. Every legal system has its own structure, its own concepts, and publication strategy. We know from product markets that spontaneous standardization is not happening. Eh? If you have different companies and they would benefit from having a standard type of thing, is it not coming spontaneously? You need intervention from a, an, a government to, to regulate that. So also here, um, well, normally standardization is not taking. So also here, because national legislators will not come up with a standardized way of uh, structuring their, their legal systems, you need a supranational authority to, to, to do that. So again, this market failure could be solved by the following appropriate EU action, namely, you provide a classification system and standard legal terminology which is applied in every country. And the third market failure which Europe could solve, it's namely that standard rules, they are non-provided public goods. So the first EU action consisted of you should oblige each legal national legislator to describe its legal system in detail accessible to non-citizens. But that would require an enormous investment. Every national country would have to start writing down in detail its system. So there Europe could step in uh, to, to reduce this big, huge investment and, um, because otherwise it would be a wasteful thing to do. Because Comparative lawyers have shown that even if legal rules may be described in a bit different ways, in many legal systems they have the similar rules. And many rules are similar, so in the end you could have one um, European authority or uh, legislator write the common rules in Europe in a standardized way. So uh, that would save a lot of cost that the own con the national legislators don't have to do. So the appropriate EU actions, because we don't have standard rules, is actually that Europe could finance the drafting of a European standard sales code. So what would in this code? This would be rules which are more or less similar in each country, but it would be described in English and in a standardized way. The standard code would apply automatically in all EU countries unless a, com a member state would say, no, we want to do it different than the standard. This is basically what standards do. They are a standard, but if you want to deviate from it, you could. So definitely these codes would reduce citizens' legal information costs and reduce legal production costs. Anyhow, the conclusion, I'm here putting uh, three of the, the options that were actually considered in the regulatory, uh, two of the options considered in the regulatory impact assessment. So the option that we would have added, and actually, well, it's not us, 
This option of a standard sales code has already been also in the literature. I think in 2002, uh, I read this, uh, an academic green paper on European contract law. Uh, as soon as European Commission was having a, um, uh, saying that it wanted to do something on European private law, a lot of experts were gathered together, um, well, and um, including Jan Smits is in the book, and they were indeed looking at all the different instruments and uh, ways how Europe could, could uh, intervene in, in, in European contract law, and well, two authors were already pointing that one of the options could be that Europe is more creating information duties, class, um, standardizing legal systems, creating creating standard codes, so uh, Gerry de Geest and Roger van den Berg were already pointing at these possible uh, instruments, but unfortunately these instruments were no longer considered uh, in the impact assessment. Nevertheless, I would say such, uh, if we would have a regulation on a European standard sales code, it would reduce legal information costs, but it would maintain regulatory competition. Uh, why? Every country could still say we deviate from the standard. Uh, so if you do nothing, it's the standard, but if you want to deviate, you put it clearly stated, we deviate on one of the, well, not the whole standard, but maybe one of the rules included in the standard. You could do that. So we have the best of both worlds. We have legal information costs and we maintain regulatory competition. The directive on a mandatory common European sales law, which was seen as an option and it was indeed no longer uh, not uh, selected, I think that is a very good idea of no longer to work with these directives. Uh, because directives, they are the worst of both worlds. They reduce regulatory competition. Uh, so member states lose the possibility to, to draft their own rules, so there is no longer regulatory, but they do not get the benefit of substantially improving legal information costs because, well, what you know under a uh, directive is that, for example, the product liability directive, in each country you more or less has the same rules on product liability, but still in detail you still need to learn uh, Italian to know how Italians deal in detail with product liability. So it's still a lot of uh, information costs. The third option here on uh, the slide, which is the one that has now the preference, which is actually the optional common European sales law, I would say definitely with having that uh, system, you maintain regulatory competition because the national legislator still continues to create its own system. It's only in parallel that you have the common law. But I would say there are still very high information costs to know other legal systems. So if you want to know Italian law, the Italians can continue with their own system, with their own, uh, even if standardization would be a good idea. And definitely I think with that system there will be additional costs to decide which system applies eh, because uh, people will have to take uh, express actions to define which system do we want to be applied. So I foresee some, some problems with that. If you would have the European Standard Code, it would be um, applied across the board. So I would say that that has uh, less um, legal information costs. <clears throat> 